Hey guys, my name is Nicole. Welcome back to my channel. It is a springtime miracle. I finally made the time to get some crafts done for my booth, Green Onion Vintage. Hoping to get those in my booth soon for sale, right in time for spring. And a huge thank you to My Treasure House for partnering with me today and providing some Iron Orchid design supplies to share with you guys that are from their new spring line. And you can order from My Treasure House online. I'll have all their details down below if you wanna get some Iron Orchid designs for yourself. And we're doing a big giveaway for today's video of the Iron Orchid design stamp set that I'm showing right here. And I'll give you all those details at the end of today's video. So let's get right into some crafts. So here's a look at everything I'm hoping to work on today. So I kind of organized everything by where I purchased them from. Not doing a lot of thrift updates today like I sometimes do. Um, these are actually mostly new items that you can go grab in the store for yourself if you like any of these projects and want to replicate them. So this uh, section of things right here is from Dollar Tree. They just had a few like little frames that I thought were really cute. And this little crate. I got this little uh, carrot garland. And then I really liked these binders. They're just kind of cardboardy, um, pretty basic. But for $1.25, I thought that those would look really nice for some of my homeschool unit studies. And especially with the addition of the new Iron Orchid Design products that I'm gonna show you here in a minute. So I'm excited to work on that. I got these little planters at Target and they're only $5. I think that they're really nice quality for five bucks. The plants look nice and realistic especially compared to some of the florals that I saw at Dollar Tree, which were not my favorite. I think these have a much better look to them. And for them to be including this nice white planter for $5, I just thought that was a really good deal. Um, I found these kind of next to the Studio McGee stuff in Target, but mine were on the back of an end cap. So if you're having a hard time finding them, go to the floral section kind of by the home decor and maybe try the end cap that is furthest away from the main aisle. Um, and that's where I found these. I thought they were really pretty. They are plastic, but I feel like they look almost like ceramic. So I thought that was a really good find and I'm excited to stamp those today. This is a thrifted picnic basket that I'm gonna put some transfers on today. That should be a really simple project that will hopefully upcycle that really quickly and be able to sell that in my booth. I also thrifted this little white pitcher that I thought I would put a stamp or a transfer on. I haven't exactly decided yet. Got some greenery here from Walmart and I think this one's from Michaels. And then all of the eggs here, which is a mixture of, I wanna say plastic, white, these are plastic, and then some wooden eggs. Those are all from Michaels and they are marked down a lot this week. So I think I only paid like a couple dollars for each little set of eggs. And then another couple dollars for the grass that I'm gonna be using to fill some of my pieces today. And then moving on to my new stuff from Iron Orchid Designs um, that I purchased at my treasure house. Um, so the first sheet is the Malotz pages. And this is an artist that's actually pretty popular in other places as well. So they're not exclusive to Iron Orchid Designs. I actually have a poster over here that I believe is the same artist um, that I got from Michaels. And then some of the Cavallini posters that I've used in previous videos, I believe is the same artist also. Um, so I'm really excited about these because they have such good details and the Iron Orchid design transfers are so easy to use. You just cut out what you want and then you use a little plastic scraper that comes with it to apply it to your surface. It is such an easy way to transform anything. So I love buying stuff at Goodwill for really cheap and then using some of the Iron Orchid designs to upcycle them and then sell them in my booth. So here's like a mushroom page, a floral page, some fruits, some bugs some vegetables, which is probably my favorite one. All of these eggs, all these butterflies, which if you look at the details on those, they're so pretty. And then a fish page. I think that's the last one. Yeah, I feel like I missed a bug page, did I? Really quickly. I just love like the Iron Arc design transfers for their detail and their color quality. They're so nice. And they have like the text down here like the posters have. This one's a little creepy. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna use these, but my boys love this page, of course. I have three little boys, so might find something to use that for for them. Have a better look at all the fruits. And then this is the sheet that I think I'm gonna be using today on the top of my picnic basket. So I'm looking forward to trying that out. And then again, the mushrooms, but look at the variety here. 
So I was thinking I would use these to create some kind of framed art with those little miniature frames that I got from the Dollar Tree. So that is one of the transfer pages that is available for sale on their website or on their app, um, which is my treasure house. And then the other stamp set that I got today, which is also from the new Iron Orchid Design um, spring line, it's called Antiquities. So it reminded me a lot of their really popular stamp set with the crockery stamps, um, but it's just kind of a updated version or just an alternate version, but I really liked this beehive one. And then there's just some more florals. These ones are just like a little bit more antique, whereas the crockery ones were a little more farmhouse. So I really like that I have both now. It gives me a lot of good options. And then I thought for spring, like some of the ones with the pig and the bike especially would be really cute. So I'm gonna definitely be using these today on some of the eggs and maybe some of the planters that I bought. And this is also going to be the stamp set in the giveaway if you missed that earlier. So this is the set that I'll be giving away on today's video and like I said I'll give you those details of how to make sure that you're entered at the end of the video so let's get to work so I'm starting off today with this picnic basket and anytime I have a blank canvas like this I get really overwhelmed with decision fatigue basically and trying to decide what I should do with it so I've had a million ideas go through my mind of painting it and then applying a stencil or a transfer but I think I'm just gonna keep it simple today and just grab a sheet from this new transfer page um, set. And like I said earlier, there's eight sheets in here. So I think I'm just gonna grab this floral one out and apply it right on the lid. I love the look of their transfers on raw wood. So it makes sense for me to just keep it simple and do it this way anyway. And I think this is gonna make a really big transfer transformation with very little effort. Um, so as you can see, it's as simple as just tearing the sheet out and then lay the design on the wood top, however you want it to be. And you just take the little plastic piece, um, this little transfer stick, and you just rub the design right on there. And it is a permanent image. Now at this point, it could still be sanded off. So if you really wanted to protect it, you can go over it with a clear coat. Um, just like a flat finish would be my recommendation just for it to look nice. And I think that would make it look nice and cohesive. So I will do a little flat clear coat over the top of this when it's done. Um, but I probably do that off camera just because it's kind of tedious and time consuming and takes a while to dry. So I won't do it for you guys today, but I would just do a really thin coat or two of just a flat clear coat. Any brand will do, but I would suggest polycrylic so that it doesn't yellow later on. My favorite part about the transfers is that you can really customize the look of them. So even if everybody is using the same transfer, you can really make them look like your own piece of art. I like to just cut out what I need to use and then try to save as much as I can for other projects. Since they can be a little pricey to purchase, I just want them to go as far as they possibly can. At the same time though, I do want to use them up because I'm kind of bad about trying to save them for a really long time, but then they just end up kind of collecting on my shelf in my craft room. So I do think it's better to just go ahead and use them if you really need to buy another one because it sells out. Well, that's actually kind of a good problem, right? Or if it sells and that's better than it just sitting down in your craft room. So I do have to encourage myself to go ahead and use them even though they're beautiful and I always feel like I wanna save them for the perfect project. This probably is the perfect project, so why not just go ahead and use it now? But as you saw there, I just cut off the edge of it. Um, so I have a lot left that I can put on a different project now in the future. And all you do for the transfers is just remove them right here from the backing, which is super easy. You have a little bit of wiggle room to move it around. It's not gonna attach immediately. And once you figure out your placement, you're just gonna rub the image right on there with your little stick. I'm sure there's a better word for this. I'm totally blanking on what that would be right now. And then you're good to go. I decided to run my image kind of sideways actually, so that when the lid opened, it would be kind of up and down rather than running the flowers this direction like I originally thought I would. I don't know if that's the right choice, but it makes sense to me, so I'm just gonna go with it.
Okay, now I'm gonna start working on these two packs of wooden eggs. They were $6 originally each, and then I think there's a 40% off sale, and then I get another 15% for being a homeschool teacher. So I only paid about $3 for both, for each bag. Um, they're just kind of this nice natural wood color right now, but I do think I'm gonna darken them up just a little bit for a little bit more contrast um, when I set them in the wood crate. And then I think I'm gonna display some like on an ironstone dish, which is also white. So I don't want them to be all white and all like too light colored. I wanna add a little bit of color to some of them. Sorry, I'm having a really hard time keeping them in the cameras here. There we go. Um, so this is what they look like. They're really nice. Um, I'm gonna wait and keep an eye on those when they go on sale after Easter. Try to snag a bunch of them that way, maybe get even a better deal on them. But I didn't think that price was too bad. It was more fair than what I saw on Amazon. So have the smaller size, which is more like a regular egg size, and then the three of the larger. And so what I'm gonna do is I have just like an old Tupperware here. You can see there's some water in the bottom. And then I'm gonna use this water-based Tobacco Road gel stain from Dixie Bell. Um, this is just kind of their regular brown shade. And I have some water in here to dilute the gel stain so that it's not um, as dark of a brown as it would be on its own. And I'm just gonna use the Tupperware to stain the eggs a little bit darker rather than using a brush. Oh, I haven't used this in a while. Let me shake it a little bit more. So I'm gonna put the eggs in there, put the lid on, and just kinda let the eggs roll around for a minute rather than trying to like hand brush each egg. I feel like that's gonna be a lot faster. Um, and then I'm gonna leave a few in there after I do the first round and then add a little bit more stain. So there's gonna be some that are a little bit darker. And then I might go over them at the end with either the white gel stain or some white wax. I'm just gonna play with it and see how I feel about the color once I'm finally done. So here's the Tobacco Road. It's just a very like neutral brown color. Okay, that's the texture that it should be. It's a, it's a gel stain, but I like that it's water-based. It's just a little bit easier to use than their oil-based stains would be. And all of this is available on my Etsy shop, all the Dixie Bell products if you guys are needing somewhere to buy those. So I don't know, that was probably way more than I wanted to do. That's okay, we're just gonna test out a couple here. And if it's too dark, I can just pour out some of the stain or add some more water. So I'm gonna see what happens when I just kind of roll them around without the lid on and see how messy this is. I really just wanna make them a little bit more rich looking and I feel like this is doing the trick, but also water kind of does that anyway. Okay, so I'm rolling these around, not doing a great job. I'm just gonna take one out and my fingers always have some kind of paint or stain on them, so I'm not terribly worried about that. I probably should have taken the time to actually stir the water and stain together first, because it's super uneven. Okay, I need to do this a little bit better. I'm gonna go mix this up with a spoon, shake these around, and then come back and see if I can dry them off and they look a little bit uh, more even than this. And here we are with everything mixed up a little bit more appropriately. Okay, I like that these are just adding some warmth to the eggs. They're not gonna die as perfectly even because of just the nature of the wood that they are. I mean, they're not expensive and I didn't prime them in any way to be stained. But I'm liking that color a lot better. It just gives them a little bit more character. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a few more like this. And then after I add either the stamp or the transfer, that's when I'm gonna, when I'm gonna go back in with the white glaze. If I decide that I, they need a little bit more character than this, honestly though, I'm already loving where they are right now. So I might just leave them without the white, but we'll see. It's all kind of a, a guessing game with me, kind of just going along and seeing what I like the best. But let's just keep going and then see where we end up. So my plan for all of my wooden eggs is just to go through this new booklet of transfers and just pick some tiny little decals that I can put on each one. I know I wanna use a couple of the mushrooms. I'm thinking maybe a couple of the strawberries on this sheet. Just trying to keep a nice spring theme in mind. And then I was definitely thinking I would do some of the vegetables. Maybe I'll do, um, a butterfly or two also. I don't know if I quite have enough eggs to do that many, but some of these like really tiny ones I think would look cute. Um, I don't wanna cut up my transfers too much because there's some things that I think I wanna use a full sheet for, um, but I do think that this is a good opportunity to use up some of the ones that I'm not sure what else I would do with. 
So now I'm just going to go through and kind of just pick my favorite ones out of here and the ones that are appropriately sized. So they're going to have to be pretty tiny. I'll just cut them out and then put one on each egg. To finish these wooden eggs up, I'm just going to rub a few of them down with this hemp seed oil. This is just going to add one more color variation to the eggs and then make it look a little bit more natural as if you had a bunch of different kind of chickens and you just went and got all their eggs and you're going to have a bunch of different egg colors. So I think that just by adding one more color, it's going to make these really visually interesting. I am loving how these are coming out, by the way. So I'm just going to grab, make three or four of them to rub the oil over and then I think I'm going to call it for these and they're going to be all done.
So while I have this stain out, I'm gonna go ahead and use it to give some dimension to this white crate. <laughs> it's on camera, you can barely tell I even painted it. Honestly, it's almost the exact same color as the natural balsa wood, but I'm gonna just roll with it and this is gonna hopefully give it a little bit more character. So I'm just very lightly dipping in my foam brush here and then I'm just gonna drag it along the edges again, very lightly just to give it some faux distressing, basically. I don't wanna to go too heavy with this because I don't wanna look it to look like too overdone. So just really lightly like this. I don't even think I'm gonna do the cracks through the middle, I'm not sure actually. I could go ahead and do the cracks. I think I'll wait until after I do my design and see if it needs it. I'm just afraid that if I did the cracks, it would take away from whatever design I do on the front. And then just take a paper towel and kind of smudge it in. So you can see that like barely did anything to the edges. I might just do a little bit more, especially on the top and bottom. But I'm just gonna go around the whole crate and give it this faux distressed look really quickly. Okay, it's time to break out my new stamps. I just need to decide which one I wanna put on the front of this little crate. Obviously, I need one that's gonna fit. Okay, so I'm considering this one even though it's slightly too tall. Otherwise, I could fit maybe just like a round emblem. It's not my favorite one for this project though. I really wanna do the bike, honestly. I think that would be really cute. Well, the pig one fits. A chicken would, or a rooster would be appropriate because I'm gonna be filling this with eggs. It just isn't quite the right size. I don't know, that wouldn't be too bad actually if it hangs off the bottom. I think that one looks pretty cute. I just do think I want something that's a little bit more wide to fill the whole space. Um, I'm really leaning towards the bike, even though, I don't know, are <laughs> bikes and eggs really a good combination? I don't know. I feel like bikes make me think of at least spring and summer, which the eggs would be too, but maybe I should do pigs and kind of stick with like the farm theme. Oh, it's so hard to decide. Well, whichever one I do, since this is a new stamp set, I'm gonna lightly sand the stamp before I use it and then I'm just gonna pick one, dip it in some black permanent ink and then just apply it right onto the crate. So I almost did a YouTube magic moment here and erased my mistake in this process, but I went ahead and left this edit in so that you guys can see that things don't always turn out the first time as easy as it may seem on video. So uh, the first time that I applied this stamp, I put way too much pressure on with the brayer. The brayer is like the little rolly thing I'm using here to apply the stamp evenly. I do think it helps a ton with just getting even pressure down on the stamp but I definitely pushed way too hard and it made my stamp just really sloppy and I think it caused it to slide a little bit so next time I use it I just use a much lighter touch and it comes out much better but you're gonna see me here in a minute I just decided to repaint it immediately let the paint dry again and then take another attempt and the stamps they really are easy to use this was just me trying to do things too quickly and also never using the brayer before. It was just a bit of a learning moment for me. So if you use a brayer, just use a really light touch and I think you'll have more success. The stamps are so fun to use. I really, really love them. I will definitely share more of those in my next video, but just wanted to pipe in and say, it's not always perfect and I did have to fix my mistake. Guys, my finger is getting so sore from doing this, my thumb in particular but I'm gonna keep going with the transfers. I'm gonna move on to the frames though that I got from the $1.25 tree. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, Dollar Tree is no longer $1. It's either $1.25, $3, or $5. Um, but these were $1.25. I love the style of these, like with this little antique looking clip on the bottom. And they look wood, cause they're, they're like MDF, but they don't have the gloss of like some of the cheaper frames. This one I grabbed because I like the small size for using with these transfers, but the frame itself is a little glossy and it, I mean, it's plastic and it just looks very plastic. So I think this one I'm gonna run some of that same buttercream chalk paint over and then just distress the edges, hopefully to make it look a little bit more expensive. And all I'm gonna do is just go through this packet of transfers and run the frame over it and try to just find perfect images to fit each frame. 
This one's gonna have to be vertical because of the clips, so I might make this one a horizontal image. Like, look how cute that little butterfly would be in here. Um, actually, that might be the one I go with. I could do something with a little more width, though. Not quite. So it's just gonna take me a while to go through and figure out exactly which one I wanna use for all of these and on to paint the frame, but um, once I pick out my images, I just have this really nice, like, thick um, painting paper. There you go. It's not cardstock. I think it's actually for oil painting. And uh, I just cut it down to size to fit in each frame. And I'm just going to go ahead and apply the transfer right onto this paper and put it in the frame and hope that that looks well. I've never done this before. Hope that looks good, I think I should say. I haven't tried this before, so I'm not sure how the transfer is going to look on there. If I need to go over it with maybe some watercolor to kind of blend the image into the paper, I might try that also. But I'm hoping to make this as easy as possible so that if you guys want to recreate it, you can do so. So I'm hoping I just need to transfer the image onto the paper, put it in the frame, and then we'll be good to go. So for these two lavender pots, I was planning on using some of the stamps for them, but they're just really slick and I tried to do a stamp on them and it just came out really terrible. So I decided instead I would pull out one of my older transfer sheets, which is the traditional pots. And I have a few more of just like these black emblems that I could use that I think would just last a little bit better. 
And so from the ones I had left, I grabbed this one, which I think will be cute. It's a little bit big for the paw. I actually might just cut the birds out. That might make more sense for the scale of the paw. And then the other one is this one here, um, which I think will be kind of cute. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and transfer those right on there. I'll save the stamps for my next project, I guess, in my next video. I have all of those white eggs still that I think I'm going to use the stamps on. So I didn't buy them for no reason. They are going to get used, but they just weren't quite right for this project. But that's okay. So here's how these two little planters turned out. They were a super easy little project that really upscaled these little $8 planters from Target. Super happy with those and the material of these pots, they took the transfers really well. So I feel like those are going to be really nice and durable. There's so many options with these planters. I think they'd be really fun to paint some colors and even do the baking soda paint technique to make them look a little thicker and more like an actual clay pot. So the options are endless. I will bet definitely be picking up more of these to use in future videos, but for today, this is a really quick and easy little project, but I'm losing my light, which means I need to wrap it up for today. Everything that I didn't get done in today's video, I'm just gonna push on to my next one so that I can get this video out to you guys. I only was able to share the stamp on this project today, which is part of the stamp set for the giveaway. So that's how the stamp came out. So right now I'm gonna show you guys final looks and then stick around for information on how to join that giveaway. Now to enter today's giveaway, I need you to like today's video, make sure you subscribe to my channel Green Onion Vintage, and also just put a comment down below what your favorite project is today, and those are the names that'll go into the drawing for this giveaway. And also, if you do not win the giveaway, don't worry, you can still order from my treasure house, either on their website or on the app, and I'm gonna have all those details down in the description box, nice and clear, so you guys can follow along there. You can order right from your phone through their app, so it's really handy. They have um, Iron Orchid designs and in addition to some other things in their shop. And that is where I have one of my booths, so really thankful to them for partnering with me today and letting me try out some of the new Iron Orchid design things. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure that you've entered today's giveaway, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. I should have another DIY video coming up really soon for springtime because I'm trying to get my booth nice and full, but I appreciate you guys being here with me today. See you in the next video. Bye.